Today we're here in my shop to take a look at the Dremel Moto Saw. I'm kind of interested in this tool because I've got a Dremel scroll saw, an old one, it's an obsolete model, that gets some pretty heavy use in my shop. Now, that's a bigger saw and I don't expect this one to be the same, but this is what they've got on the market now, I guess you could say to replace that. Now I'm interested to see how well it will do. It comes packed, as you can see here, in a blow molded case, which makes me think instantly, this is great for somebody that doesn't have a full-time shop set up. Like maybe they live in an apartment or a small house, they don't have a garage, they don't have a basement, they don't have someplace they can set up a workshop, but they still want to do some work. This is a compact tool which to me says, yeah, it's perfect for that, especially with the case. We want to take a look at what it can do. It comes as the saw itself, which is kind of like a powered coping saw in my mind. As a matter of fact, they actually use the term coping saw in their, their instructions and a table. So the table can be attached to a surface like say your dining room table and allows you to use it as a regular scroll saw comes with the clamps for that. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it on this steps tool heel, mostly because my workbench is too thick to even think about putting these clamps on. They're designed for an edge of a table, say a dining room table, not for a workbench that's got two by sixes around the edges, okay? That's a little too much for it. Okay, so the table is made of injection molded plastic. It's got tracks in it, T-tracks for a fence or a miter gauge. That's sold as an accessory, it doesn't come with it. And then the saw sets right down into it. We drop the... And then it should supposedly just set right down here and lock into place, and it does. Well, that was pretty easy. So mounted like this, this can be used as a regular scroll saw. It has a power switch down here and a speed adjustment, one through six. In the instructions for most things, it tells you to use a high speed cutting speed, so that's the six. But if you're gonna cut metal with it, you're supposed to be able to cut metal with it, it recommends dropping the speed. It also recommends dropping the speed for plastics because at a high speed, you can actually melt the plastics. So that gives you that adjustment. It comes with four different kinds of blades and the blades are specific to the saw. You cannot use regular scroll saw blades on it. You've got a coarse tooth and a fine tooth, normal wood, metal, or wooden plastic cutting blade. So you have two different ones there. You have a right angle blade, which is something really interesting. Instead of having the blade teeth in this direction, the blade teeth are running this way. And that's how they've overcome the problem of not having a lot of throat depth. If you want to cut something longer, you can still cut something longer on the saw by switching the blade out and having that blade running this way. Great idea. And then there's a separate metal cutting blade that is very fine tooth for cutting metals. And it's supposed to cut metals up to 20 gauge, okay? And when we're talking metals, we're talking about tin, aluminum, copper, brass. We're not talking steel, we're talking soft metals. Maybe galvanized steel flashing, something like that. Again, that's lightweight material is what we're really dealing with. Blade changing is designed to be very easy on the saw. There's a tensioning lever on the side here. You flip that forward, take your blade with the teeth pointing down, put it in the slot here, and that hooks in the bottom. And then the top now, on this particular blade, the pins seem to be a little long, and I don't know if that's indicative of them or that's normal. I've had to twist it a little bit to get it in the slot. You wanna get it all the way back to where it's vertical, not leaning forward, and then boom, and it's tension. So there's no tension adjustment to deal with. That's pretty easy. I imagine once I get used to it, it'll be really easy to change blades out on the saw. The pressure foot here is a little different than what I've seen on other saws. There's no knob to tighten or anything like that. There's a button here relieving the pressure. And I imagine we've got to get the pressure foot in contact with the wood. So the controls consist of the adjustment here for the tensioner and you can push that down without pushing the button. You only need to push the button to bring it up. The blade tensioner. And then on the bottom here, I see a power switch and the speed control. It's not very big and there's not a lot to mess with, but then again, it's a scroll saw. It's not a really complex tool. As with any scroll saw, this is all about cutting curves. The question is what kind of curves can we cut and how thick? According to the instruction manual, it'll cut pine or plywood up to three quarters of an inch thick. All right, that sounds reasonable to me. That's probably most of our stuff we do. So let's give it a try with a couple different pieces of material. I'm gonna start off with some quarter inch glue on plywood here. It's Okay, I went through that like butter, that was no problem. Let's step it up to half inch thick plywood. And I broke the blade. Okay, I'm putting too much pressure on the blade. That's my fault and not the saws. So we're gonna take the blade out and replace it. So it went through the half inch pretty good once I quit overdoing it. As I said, that was my fault and not the saws. I 
trying to put too much pressure on it. And with any scroll saw, they tell you not to do that. The blades are pretty thin, they're pretty fragile. Now I'm stepping up to three quarter inch plywood. This is the thickest material they say in the instruction manual you're supposed to be able to cut on it. So let's see what it'll do with the three quarter inch. That went pretty well. About the same speed it was cut through if I was on my bigger scroll saw, so it's not like it can't handle it. Now I'm going to overdo it. I always like to push tools to see what I can get out of them, so I'm going to go through a piece of 2x6 here, if the saw will let me. I just want to see if it'll do it. Even though it's not supposed to, it did it. You know, I love it when a tool will do more than what the manufacturer says it'll do. And that's pretty good. That, Granted, that's some pretty rough cutting for what looks to be a very small saw, but it didn't bog down at all. That's really what I was looking for, to see if the motor bogged down going through that thicker piece of wood. And it didn't. I've gone ahead and installed the blades at a right angle. Okay, I've got it so the teeth are facing me. When I saw the instructions, it doesn't matter which way you face it. I've just gone this way because I'm standing on this side. That cut really well. I'll have to say it was a little weird putting it in. Now, one thing I do notice is that you better have a clamp down well because you're actually pushing it away. So you're trying to push it out of the clamps when you're doing that. But that's just a matter of tightening the clamps properly, okay? I actually don't have these clamps real tight. So that worked out well as well. We're able to cut at a 90 degrees without any sort of problem. They also say this saw will cut metal. So I've got a piece of aluminum here. Now you can readily identify the metal cutting blade, one, because the teeth are smaller, and two, because the amount of blade up here at the top that is not cut with teeth is longer. So it gives you a good visual reference. Well, I cut through that easier than I did the quarter inch plywood so that did really well that's not a problem at all one of the things that's unique about this saw is that it doesn't have to be used with the table it can be used as a handheld by the way changing blades gets really easy after you've done it a few times and there's a push button back here in the back part of the table it releases the saw and it comes right out okay you have to unplug it because the cord has to come out through the table and now we're ready to use it in the handheld mode now what this made me think of when i saw the saw was the original use of a coping saw you know, what coping saws were used for was mitering trim. I've got a piece of trim here that I've gone ahead and cut at a 45 degree angle as if I was mitering it to give me an idea of what profile I should be cutting. Now, there's more than one way to do it, but cutting it at a 45 degree angle like this is the easiest way to do it. All right, that pressure foot has really got to be down on the wood when you're freehanding. It's a little tricky to see past the top bar and get your eyes at an angle where you can see the blade where it's cutting, but it did the job. Did a nice clean cut, even with all the curves. This is a fairly complex piece of trim I've cut. So it works in that mode as well. The surprising thing to me about this saw is that in the various different modes I've used it, in the various materials, I haven't heard the motor bogged down at all. Now, I don't know what they've got in here, but it's not a very big package, so it can't be a very big motor. And yet it's managed to keep up with even cutting materials that are more th are thicker than what the saw is designed for. Two things I've noticed that you really have to watch out for in using it. Number one is, is that the blade tensioner level here has a detent. You gotta make sure you snap it onto that detent. It's really easy to just flip it over there and not get it to the over the detent and you lose your blade, okay? And then the other thing is, is that the foot here, the pressure foot has really got to be in contact with the wood that you're cutting, especially in the freehand mode. Now, I'm used to, on my bench scroll saw, not worrying so much about that foot because I let my hands provide the pressure holding the workpiece to the table. Well, you've got a smaller table here and your hands are closer to the blade. So you really want to make sure you've got a good contact there and just for safety. But other than that, I can't see any real limitations on the tool. I'm really surprised. It's more powerful than I would have expected. Would it replace a larger scroll saw in a workshop like mine? Probably not. But I could see very easily if I was going out on a job site somewhere and I had to install some trim, especially something like crown molding, where I needed to do coping of the molding, I could see where it'd be very useful. I wish them all the luck with it because I think it's a good tool and I think the right customers using the tool are gonna find out that they're very happy with what it'll do for them.